Hello again, welcome to the High B Buzz. And this week, three is definitely your magic number. It is our third episode, three victories on the spin. Uh, and three guests with me again today uh, from uh, Hibs. We have Adam Tomlinson and uh, Ben Jacobs, and also from our female uh, team, it is uh, Joel Murray from the women's team. Great to have you all here again. I, I suppose actually the most important number is 100, Hibs 100, which we will be celebrating in about a week's time with our 100th game in Europe. Looking at the season so far, Joel, what have you made of the three games and the form we're showing as we go into Europe again for our third European tie? I think it's been a fantastic start from, from Jack and, and the team. Um, you always want to, to start the season um, on the front foot and they certainly done that um, on Sunday against Motherwell. Um, that was certainly on the back of two very, very positive performances against Santa Coloma. So, yeah, I don't think Jack can, can ask any more of the team at the moment. Well, Joel, putting Europe aside for, for one moment, at the weekend we saw a dramatic start to the domestic season. We certainly did, and we always seem to, to have those types of games um, away, away to Motherwell. But, yeah, lots of, lots of positives to take from Sunday's game. Um, we came from behind twice, so we, we certainly showed our perseverance and our resilience. Kyle McGuinness, I thought, had a, an absolutely fantastic game. Um, should have had a penalty, in my my opinion. Um, you've got Scott Allen back in the match day squad, and lots and lots of positivity and 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 good things happening at the moment. And certainly Sunday, um, Sunday showed that we we wanted to start the season with three points and a, a good performance, and we certainly did that. And I think the two thousand travelling fans, um, from the sounds of it, watching on on the television, it sounded like like more than that um absolutely and we always speak about in football the the 12th the 12th player and certainly they played their part on sunday and, and hopefully they can they can do the same tomorrow night and um from afar um next week as well ben what does um uh, the hibs 100 mean to the club i mean this is huge everyone has got i know we've been running the, the hibs 100 hashtag this week and everyone's got their favorite memories of of uh, European football with Hibs, but reaching the century milestone. It's astonishing, isn't it? And it's more reason to get excited about this particular tie. The home leg at Easter Road against Rijeka is 99. So we're 99 not out, which is more of a cricket term. But unlike cricket, we do get to get to 100 regardless of what happens at Easter Road. And in Croatia, we'll bring up the 100. And I think simply it's just a chance to fuse the modern with the historical so so often we walk into easter road and we know what a wonderful historic club this is and everybody has an affinity with players like laurie riley and pat stanton and we've also got the club's 146th birthday coming up on august the 6th so it's a real opportunity to look back but at the same time we're looking forward and we see this passionate clinical hungry squad being revamped under jack ross that are also fighting to make their own history so it's kind of a good opportunity to look back and to look forward all at once. And we've been asking people on social media, like you say, to use the hashtag Hibs100 and tell us some of their favourite European memories. And what I'm going to do to start the show is very briefly put everybody on the spot and say this, starting with you, in fact, Angus, give me a number. That's it, between 1 and 98, because, of course, 99 and 100 are still to come. And I'm going to tell you what your allocated Hibs 100 European fixture is. Okay, let's go for uh, 77. Trust you to make me scroll all the way down the list to begin with. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 77, Angus. You are 15th of September 2005. Hibernian against Dnipro. And it is, drum roll, wait for this, a nil nil. Uh, <laughs> trust me to pick out that golden straw. <laughs> that, that's a good result. <laughs> Joel, what about you? Give me a number. Um, I'll go with my squad number, number 17. Okay, number 17. So now we're going back in history a little bit. 23rd of October, 1962. This one is a good one. Stevnet, Copenhagen 2, Hibernian 3. Fairs Cup, round one, second leg. We come from behind to complete the job. Morris Stevenson scoring twice in a five-goal thriller. What do you make of that? 
Yeah, I'll take Very that. Very good. Yeah, I'll take that. And Adam? I'll, uh, I'll go for the 50th. Oh, I like it. The halfway. Let's see whether yeah. 50 brings us good fortune. 3rd of October, 1973. Keflavik 1, Hibernian 1, UEFA Cup, round 1, second leg. And we see out the tie with none other than Pat Stanton on the score sheet in Iceland. Because the first leg, number 49, we won by two goals to nil. So you've picked a victory as well. There we go. Good, good positive signs, I think. Really good memories there. And, it, and it's nice for everyone to have their own. And I'm sure there will be plenty more uh, coming in in the next few days. Make sure you use the hashtag Hibs100 and let us know your favourite uh, European memory. That is actually part of our competition because we'll be handing out... Uh, a shirt as our competition winner. We've got a retro shirt that we have um, re-released from the back end of the 70s, the uh, Turnbull Tornadoes shirt, and that is our prize this week. We'll also be announcing our prize winner from last week. We'll be hearing from Jack Ross, Matt Macy, and those uh, competition details, and we'll also be getting an insight into the Croatian team, Rijeka, that we are playing Thursday. So plenty to come on this show. Let's whiz on then with, um, with what we've got. Perhaps... Let's get Jack to inspire us first and let's hear from him ahead of this crucial European tie. I think that um, there are players that can deal with the ball, but we have that as well. And it's sometimes not appreciated enough in this country that we've got good technical players as well. But as I mentioned there, they've, they, um, recently they've played the back three and they've worked the ball to the wing backs quickly and they've delivered a lot of balls in the box. Um, three forwards that like to get shots off early as well. So they carry an attacking threat. They've seen that with the number of goals they've scored in their own league this season to date. But um, as I mentioned, it's not a challenge. I don't think that's insurmountable for us. It's a challenge that we feel as we're, we're able to deal with. And then it's about us making sure we play well in order to try and win the game. And we're at home in the first leg. How important is it that we go to Croatia with with something, with a little bit of an advantage? That's preferable. That's what we aim to do tomorrow evening. Um, it, it is, when we approach the second leg when it comes around, the aim will be to win that one as well. So uh, it's not defining. But we recognise the importance in European competitions of, of, of being strong at home. And that's what we'll look to do tomorrow evening. We feel as if we're playing well, individual players are playing well, and if we produce that type of performance at our own stadium with slightly more home fans again, which does help. And I do think that I do think there'll be a recognition amongst our fans that uh, this is a big game and I think they'll respond in terms of the atmosphere they'll generate. And as we've seen on Sunday, players feed off that, you know, players fed off on Sunday from the back and they got from from the Hibs fans who are at the game and, and I think they'll do that again tomorrow evening. Just finally, uh, what's the latest on team news players coming back and also the situation with Josh Doy? Um, so, yeah, first of all, well, the squad is the same as it was on Sunday. Um, Melke Helberg obviously out for a, little, for a prolonged period with dislocated kneecap. Chris Cadden making good progress, but still another couple of weeks away. Um, Sean Mackey still a long-term injury as well. Um, and Josh will most likely not be in the squad again tomorrow evening. But beyond that, I think we will um, start to reassess again because we said the decision was made on Sunday based on um, something imminent happening. Um, it's not been concluded as yet and if it continues like that we need to ensure that we look after ourselves properly as a club and we look after Josh properly as a player and as a young man. So um, we'll see how things develop over the next 24 to 40 hours again and, um, and go from there. Joel, this is, this is clearly more difficult tie than the previous um, tie against Santa Coloma. Um, and very enticing, knowing that in the next round, were we to get through, it's Bohemians or Pauk Salonika, so, which you might think was a little bit easier. So this, this is a real, a really crucial two-leg tie. It certainly is, Angus. I think naturally, as you progress through these, these types of competitions, the, um, the opponents get stronger. However, like you just alluded to, if we do hopefully get through this round, um, we can hopefully face a a slightly lesser opposition but certainly Jack won't be looking that far ahead and certainly the players won't either they'll they'll have the task in hand um, on their minds tomorrow night um, and in the second leg next week but it certainly uh, will be a, a, a step up in class and, and standard of, of opposition and um, we, we all know that, that Santa Coloma were a, were a part-time team and um, the, the Croatian team have a very proud history in this competition and, and they're they're sitting strong in their, their league at the moment. So there's no one there's no no doubt, there's no denying that it will certainly be a, a step up in class, but certainly um Jack and the, the, the team will all be focused with the task in hand and, and kind of appreciate the qualities that, that 
they bring individually and collectively um, and will kind of head into tomorrow's tie on a positive a positive note and on the front foot, especially after the, the weekend's win against Motherwell. How difficult is it a player and a coach like yourself to look only at, at, at the next game? Because everyone says, like, we, we take each day's a game as it comes, but you know there's an enticing prospect. I mean, the prize for the club is, is fantastic were it to get through this tie and then with the possibility of getting into the, the league stage, the group stage. Yeah, of course. And I mean, it is a football cliche, um, take each game as it comes. But as a player and a manager or a coach, you certainly need to try and do that. However, there is that kind of pressure hanging over you because the benefits um, and the value that comes with progressing further in competitions like this um, financially and from a, a personal note from, from the players, the players want to... To, to be in these competitions, want to play on the biggest stages against the best teams, against the best players. So, so yeah, although we, we're talking about taking each game at a time, there is that pressure that certainly will be in the back of not only Jack's minds, but, but the players' minds as well. Adam, it's been a great start to the season. Uh, you've been there for all of it. You were uh, out in uh, Andorra last week. Um, you're watching the victory against Motherwell at the weekend. You get the, the sense of anticipation of and the confidence building ahead of uh, this tie against Rijeka? Yeah, absolutely. I think you could, you could tell uh, against Motherwell in particular um, that there's, there's a spirit, a real strong togetherness and, and good character within that group and within um, the, the dressing room. And that all comes from, uh, from Jack Ross in terms of uh, the players believing in the way that he wants to play and, and the system that, that he puts together. I think post-match against Motherwell, he said straight away uh, at half-time, even though we were behind, I just told the players to keep believing in themselves, to keep believing in the process. They did that and they ran out 3-2 winners. One thing that, that I must say um, is the atmosphere against Motherwell was absolutely fantastic. Um, just to have uh, so many supporters back in the stadium, away fans there as well. 2,000 Hybees were, were at Fir Park and the noise that they made when, especially when we scored the, the third goal, was absolutely magnificent. And to see that bond between the players and the supporters again, um, that, that everyone's kind of longed for, especially at away games as well, for such a long period, to see that actually come together was, was really, really special. Um, but with this game, like uh, Joel said, it, it is a step up in quality. Um, there's no doubt about that. Uh, Rayeko were in the, the group stages of the Europa League last year. Um, they've got a history of, of being successful in European football. And in uh, Croatia, there is a sense among the journalists, among the football club, that they should progress into the next round. They are certainly favourites, aren't they, um, for yeah. this? Uh, ben, um, if you look at this, um, the, we, we've been to the, to the council, we've, we've increased our numbers moderately. But at least, uh, you know, the, the, the signs are that we'll get more people uh, inside Easter Road very shortly. Yeah, and it made such a big difference against Santa Coloma having fans back. It gives the players a boost, that bit of adrenaline. It allows us to have much more of an affinity directly with the fans. It's not just about the noise and the support. It's the fact that we want to see and engage with the fans. We want to make sure that everybody is OK coming back in after a pandemic and the numbers unfortunately are largely out of our control we're working constantly with the city council of edinburgh talking to them very productively and openly and honestly and emphasizing the fact that as soon as it's possible we need as many fans back inside the stadium as possible. And the good news, I suppose, is that Nicola Sturgeon announced only yesterday that restrictions are going to be lifted in Scotland pretty much at large on August the 9th. And I think that people are naturally thinking that translates to completely full football stadiums. I think that fans will also have watched other football clubs and they will have wondered, for example, why Motherwell could have 2,000 away fans and a bigger capacity than us. But it just depends upon the data. It depends upon what the variants are doing in specific parts of Scotland. 
we have to be very hyper localized with how we are looking at the data and each individual council will make a decision based upon the threat levels based upon the resource of how a game can be policed and ultimately it is the health and safety of fans in mind so let's hope going forwards that not only do we progress from this european round with our 5600 fans but then when we play in the next round and fingers crossed the group stage which would take us all the way through until december in europe let's hope that we're getting somewhere close to our original applications which were much closer to the kind of 9500 mark and that would allow us ultimately pretty much all of our season ticket holders inside first and foremost and then you build from there so we are hopeful things are moving in the right direction but for now having played for so long behind closed doors it's just amazing to have 5600 back and we know that it's going to be a loud atmosphere well the players certainly want that they want uh, the fans behind their back because it makes such a difference and what um, we will be tested with certainly is uh, the scoring ability of this Croatian side. They're uh, a very solid unit, um, and I, I think we'd all hope that, uh, that you know, if we can come away with a clean sheet uh, from this home tie, that would be super, super helpful. And it's certainly something that um, you know Matt Macy would like. It's been a good start. Obviously, um, three wins out of three competitively. Um, I think that's. That's the stand we set ourselves now, um, and even before the start of the season, you know, we want to we want to kick on from last year. Um, it's always good to get a good start. Helps. Yeah, Rayeka up next, a, a next step almost in challenge, isn't it with them? Yeah, no, they're a good team. Uh, we, we've seen a little bit about them, and that's what you would expect going progressing in Europe. You've got to be ready for a step up every time. Um, you know, it's going to be. It's going to be a good couple of games, um, but no, a challenge we're looking forward to. What do you expect from them? Because they have got uh, players that uh, some supporters might recognise. Dermich, who obviously played in the Premier League for, for Norwich City. Do you expect them to be quite a technical side? Yeah, I think um, you, know, you never really know what you're going to get in Europe. Um, they, they could change it up a little bit and surprise us, but I think obviously you expect good technical players, a bit of pace in their team. Um, and, and as we've seen already in Europe, the games can be quite possession-based, quite tactical. Um, but I think I feel like we're ready for that. Well, one of uh, Rijeka's main threats is uh, Josep Dermic. Um, I'm sure we've all seen quite a bit of him, actually, because he's been a, you know, an international uh, with Switzerland, played in all the major tournaments, often uh, as a, a substitute, um, Seferovic being preferred up front. I've seen him quite a lot. He's, He's a bit of a pain in the box. Uh, if you can keep him out of the box, I think you've got a good chance. Um, but in the box, he just, he, he looks very quiet at times. And then suddenly he'll pop up and, and score a goal and, and think, you know, where did that come from? It's a, it's a great team. We have a nice uh, team spirit. We have uh, young lads. They have um, um, not big name on the back, but they have uh, a lot of uh, potential. They are growing into a future. Um, that's why I'm really, very, very proud and um, positive and optimist. Um, we have uh, different qualities in every position. We have um, double players. Um, we are flexible. We have a, a very, very good um, coach or manager. And um, he teaches us very good. And um, yeah, lovely place, nice people, and um, we are we are growing all day. We are getting better all day, and uh, we train hard and play also good. When we look at the past, we had a few uh, good games, and we are growing slowly, but um, we are growing. That's uh, what I like. So you moved from Norwich to Rijeka. What attracted you to that particular move? Uh, if I'm honest, um, I had a very, very difficult situation there. Uh, they don't treat me very well. And um, I was looking for a solution and uh, Rijeka comes up and, um, and we had a very, very good conversation. Uh, at the first moment I wasn't like, oh wow, this, this is that. But uh, when I was thinking about and I had a good uh, conversation with the coach, with the president, with the team manager. And then I saw the place, the beautiful place, the pitches, the stadium, the infrastructure. 
Then I was um, um, looking a little bit uh, higher and uh, wider. Then I say, I say to myself, um, why not try it? You can um, uh, make some difference. You can perform, you can play a lot. And um, this is what I wish. Rijeka are extremely direct and they are likely to play a 4-2-3-1 formation. They can also play a back three. And as you say, Josip Dermic is somebody that they've got on loan from Norwich. Ironically, the best person to be the scout for Jack Ross is actually our new CEO, Ben Kenzel, because he was at Norwich as well. So knows Joseph well, and he's a very versatile player that can kind of get in the back lines, play on the defender's shoulders. And then they've got Abbas Issa as well, who's on loan from Mainz and is more of a target kind of player. The core of their team are naturally Croatians. Their captain is Nino Galovic, who is a big old fashioned defender who is going to win a lot of balls in the air, but can be a little bit shaky positional wise and also doesn't love it when players run at him. And what Hibs are going to have to try and do is make sure that particularly with the home leg, they don't play into Rijeka's style. We've got to get the ball into wide areas. We've got to play with kind of quicker passing. We've got to move the ball around a little bit more to pull some of their slower defenders um, out of position and make sure that it's a fast-paced game. It's at our pace. It's on our home patch. And that's our best kind of chance, I think, of taking a lead into uh, Croatia. Which could be, yes, hugely important. Um, yeah, it's something to look forward to, and we're all looking forward to it. And, and Joel, uh, as part of charge of the, uh, the women's team, you've got something to look forward to because you've got a new home announced this week. We certainly have. We announced last night that this season we will play our, our home games um, at Livingston um, at their, their home ground, the Tony Macaroni, Macaroni sorry, Arena. So... An exciting one for us, um, a new home, and of course it's it's outside of Edinburgh, but I think the facility is it's a top class facility. It's a facility that is very fitting of the SWPL. It's a, it's obviously a, a premier premiership um, stadium. So for us as players, we're excited. You you always want to play in these types of um, stadiums, and we've got a a, a kind of proud history and. Um, special memories of of that stadium we, we actually won the Scottish Cup in 2016 there of course in the same year as, as the men won it so we've got great memories fond memories there and hopefully we can we can make many more good stuff and it, look some people will question why aren't you playing at the club or why aren't you playing at Easter Road but this is a, a big stepping stone for the future it certainly is. Um, I don't know if, if a lot of people know, but the surface there is it's a 4G surface, so that allows for for multiple usage um, and greater usage. But certainly, it is a stepping stone for the future. Ultimately, we would like our own kind of stadium within within Edinburgh, um, and in the hope, <clears throat> excuse me, of of playing some games at Easter Road, which we have done in the in the past, um, namely so Bayern Munich in the Champions League. So. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a great, great facility, a fantastic stepping stone and hopefully a, a step towards um, our ho own home in the, the city of Edinburgh in years to come. Terrific stuff. It's uh, great to have that positive news for the women's team and good luck at Livingston. Right, on to a competition time. And last week um, we were offering you the chance to win the Eden Mill Match Day Gin. And I know everyone was interested in that and all you needed to do was comment uh, down below on our YouTube channel. And I'm pleased to say that our winner from last week is Jacqueline Cochran, uh, who was really enjoying this show. I'm pleased you are Jacqueline and so many others as well. Uh, exciting times ahead for the club. I think everyone can say that. Um, the really positive signs around the club and we are getting the buzz, which we're hoping to reflect. We hope we do reflect on the high B buzz. Um, because that's what it's all about, reflecting what is going on at the club uh, from all sorts of quarters that we're trying to bring you all that information and, of course, involve you as well. Um, and that's what we're doing. And Adam, you've got some uh, more feedback from our, our socials of what everyone is feeling about the club. Um, and you, you mentioned positivity there, and there's certainly a lot of that on social media. I think something that was really special, which I touched upon earlier, was having fans back. Uh, away at Motherwell and it was the first game for 
uh, two young supporters in particular, uh, Maya and Alicia. Um, you should see those videos on Twitter. Um, the, the young girls are just jumping up and down, uh, watching Hibernian uh, play away at Motherwell. It's, it's really nice to see. Um, something else that's uh, a little bit funny, um, obviously the stream uh, for FC Santa Coloma, the away game was a huge source of frustration for, for everyone, not only supporters, but people at the club as well. Um, when it did eventually come live um, in the second half, um, we tried to make a little bit of joke uh, about it on, on Twitter, so make sure you check that out. Uh, two, uh, I'm not sure if there's any Love Island fans on here, uh, Angus, Ben, Joel. <laughs> I'm guessing not from that, so I'll, I'll just take that on my own. Um, but uh, Ian Sterling, obviously, um, does the voiceover on Love Island, um, is a massive, massive Hibernian fan. Uh, and after the win against Motherwell, he put, and I thought Casa Amor was a rush. So if you're watching Love Island, you'll certainly know what that means. Uh, and then uh, another one, uh, obviously the Olympics is a massive topic at the minute. Um, and there's a fantastic video that was going around of the, the gymnasts, um, really, really top level gymnasts. Uh, so on our Twitter account, we put nobody and then Effie Ambrose. And if anyone knows Effie's celebrations when he scored a goal, uh, you'll certainly be able to relate to that video. And last but not least, it is the Fringe Festival. Um, it's, it's got underway uh, and there's going to be a Hibernian themed uh, show. So I guess I'm sure uh, that will interest a lot of supporters as well. Tremendous stuff. Uh, thanks very much indeed, Adam. Uh, we have another competition this week, as I said, and that's uh, for one of those Turnbull Tornadoes uh, shirts uh, back to the late uh, 70s, early 80s. Uh, we are re-releasing that. And um, Ben, can you tell us what we need to do this week if um, we are to, to win this? Who are we going to hand this one out to? Yeah, you have to sing karaoke style like that 1902 Fringe Festival. That's my kind of preference, but unfortunately I didn't get any authorization to actually make people sing. So it's just plain old social media. All we're asking is for your favorite Hibs memory in Europe. We have a Twitter link where that question is asked and it will stay up for the next week or so. And you can reply in the comments there. Please try and use the hashtag Hibs100. And then that way we can find the comments nice and easily. But just simply your favourite European memory. I know a lot of fans in more recent history, rather than kind of going back to the famous five and the comeback against Napoli and the victory over Barcelona, they're more thinking of games that they were at. So out in Greece against Tripolis. And also Bromby is a famous one that a lot of fans remember. AEK Athens as well will probably be quite popular as well. So just get on Twitter, tell us your favourite European memory and use the hashtag Hibs100. That's brilliant. As long as we don't have to watch Love Island to, to, win, the, to win the shirt. Um, right, let's turn our attention to... Now I've got a real buzz about this because I, I, this is what this club is all about. This is you know, European ties against decent opposition. And I think the step up in competition means actually that we're all more excited about it and it becomes a real test and we, then we know how real Europe is. And, and, and that's my feeling going into this one. Um, and, and just the hope that we can get through this with a possible slightly easier tie. I don't want to look too far ahead before the European group stages. Yeah, there's, there's certainly a lot of positivity um, going around the, the club at the moment. And these games, these, these top-level games, bring excitement. And you can see the fans, they're, they're excited, they're desperate to, to get along to Easter Road and, and certainly will do so to, tomorrow. And I think for me, if, if we can control the, the, the leg um, tomorrow night and then the second leg next week and kind of control the tempo of the game, um, play to our strengths um, and exploit Rayeka's weaknesses. I think over the, the two legs, we can come out of it into the next round and take one step um, further towards that elusive um, group stages. Yeah, that's brilliant. That's what we all want. Uh, ben, I think you'll be travelling over to uh, Croatia next week, maybe, so that you'll be able to bring us a lowdown for next week's show out in Croatia. Uh, Adam will be keeping across everything at the club and talking to uh, Jack and the players and bringing us the feedback from inside the camp there. Joel will always be giving us 
uh, her expert opinion from outside and and I just enjoy talking to everyone so so that's that's what this show is all about uh, we hope you've enjoyed it um, we will be back with the high B buzz next week everything to do with Hibs is on this show make sure you react to this uh, give us your comments and we'll be back next week for more mm -hmm.